Welcome back, everybody. This is my early birthday present. Uh, my birthday is tomorrow, and finally, Dean uh, Jagger is on. My man, Dean, we've been planning this for a long time, haven't we? We have, mate. We have. That's actually a lot of pressure. But happy birthday, yeah. I hope I do, hope I do you well, mate. I hope I do you proud on this one. I, uh, you, you absolutely will. And, you know, just a measure of a man for everybody who doesn't know Dean uh, as well. Um, as, as soon as season three officially got, uh, you know, kind of, uh, it got in the open that season three got picked up. Oh, yeah. I immediately, you know, uh, pinged everybody, including Dean, uh, that I have talked to. And I said, hey, congrats on season three. And the measure of a man, the first thing that Dean said was not thank you, was not anything. He's like, oh, man, I so wanted to tell you. <laughs> so, uh, that's, yeah, I did. Yeah. I just knew how much, though, it would have meant as well. And obviously, you know, you, you know you're a, you know, one of those hardened fans out there that loves the show and I think it's great what you're doing so yeah it was kind of it was, it was kind of hard to keep that one quiet I know and um, uh, again kudos to uh, uh, kudos to Dustin because I talked to Dustin uh, he knew already about season three uh, being up and he played right along he didn't say anything so oh, yeah. Dustin uh, you know I, I already said you're a really good actor so that was <laughs> that was just another example of it. well I think that stoicism really works for Dustin he is a very 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 good actor, so yeah, fair yeah. play. Uh, speaking of good actor, I mean, you are a terrific actor. Um, and I Thank was watching it again. Thank you. I, I've seen, uh, obviously, your work on Warrior. And then in my prep, I kind of went through uh, other things that you have done. And uh, the camera loves uh, kind of the drama in your eyes. You're very, very uh, good at portraying kind of the inside uh, of the, what's happening with the person. And it's captivating. You can't take your eyes off of it. The intensity uh, in your eyes, you know, especially as Dylan in some of the mm -hmm. scenes. Uh, Dylan yeah. can be softer, but when Dean, uh, you know, when Dean as well as Dylan is hard, you're like, okay, I'm just gonna say thank you, and I'm gonna go now. It's, yeah. it's that it's that intensity that comes uh, through. And I know, you know, from an actor's perspective, it's acting, but it's also you. And what I've seen kind of and reading about you, that's, uh, you know, not uh, some of the things about, uh, you know, Dylan, uh, of how he goes about his business, but the hardness, uh, that is uh, a part of you. How much uh, Dylan is there in Dean? Um, well, I mean, I think as an actor, you know, it's, it's, it's in your toolbox, isn't it, to have the want to... Yeah try draw from something i think we as actors we, we we do that we gravitate to something that we can find that's what real to us you know and somehow shape our form adapt that and, and use that in the right way that's somewhat safe i guess um yeah. but you know i've had you know, i've had a full life man you know i've 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 had a pain i've had a past it myself so you know and I don't mind like talking about it and whatnot there's there are a point in my life where it could have gone a different way for me you know you know start living on a on a family's reputation that i had yeah. um small town mentality it got me into like a lot of trouble at one point in my life and um you know when i when it's, it comes down to brass brass tax it's, it's it's ego isn't it that's what it is it's it's yeah. it's it's not necessarily a good thing and there were times i got put in situations where you know uh, i did some things that i mean i'm not proud of you know um but you know i've always had a big heart you know um i've always tried doing the right thing i've always had the aspirations to try change my life but yeah in terms of like what i can draw from yeah i mean i used to be i'll just tell you flatly i used to be a brawler man you know mm -hmm. I, I did i used to be i used to i used to be a brawler you know and uh i hope that my mum doesn't mind me saying this because <laughs> i'm i'm kind of back home right now my place is in la and i'm, I'm back home um yeah. for the time being and i'm uh, it's one thing, Alan, to 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 uh, be stood in a courtroom and, and potentially standing for charges that's going to, you know, send you away and take you away yeah. from your from your family, you know, and um, you know that broke my mum's heart, and that was a defining moment for me. That's when I really had to like realize how much you know what I was doing was like wrong and whatnot you know and it wasn't my fault I've got plenty of situations and I was just mm -hmm. me being me and I was just younger and I was just fiery and tempered and stuff like that but yeah I broke my mom's heart you know and, and she's been my oracle she's always believed in me she's always believed in you know 
what I wanted. For, you know, she always believed in my acting and she always pushed me. She never, you know, deterred from, you know, me from that that want to do that. And I owe her everything. So I kind of had to book up my ideas and um, and start, you know, trying to do, be a good boy and whatnot. So I, I kind of, I, I, there's things I can draw from, like for sure as an actor, for like Dylan, absolutely, you know. I've, you know, I've, you know, I've always wanted to be an actor. You see, I've always wanted to do acting since school. You know, I did theatre studies. You know, you you grow up through school in a in a British school. You learn about Shakespeare and whatnot, and that's just instilled to you from a very young age. But um, growing up, I didn't go to London. I didn't train in London. I didn't have enough money. I wanted to build inside, <laughs> digging trenches, clearing bricks, you know, off and stuff like that, and doing all kinds of odds and sobs jobs to try and get by so that I could get a train down to London and audition and do things like that and put myself in the right place. And it kind of took me a while, but yeah. when I really got a kind of thirst for it, you know, I, I, I gave everything to it. You know, I kind of crossed that, that threshold. I've just gone on a complete tangent there, but um, no, this no, is just an explaining about who I am. Uh, and no, it's, it, it's the, again, what comes through is the authenticity. Right. And uh, uh, when when uh, the cast was asked, you know, who is the farthest from their character? Everybody pretty much said you, you know, you are not like uh, you're not like Dylan <laughs> because you're you're a different uh, you're a different person. But yeah. there is you're very authentic. And anytime I see you Thank talk you. and I've watched, you know, other interviews that you have done and yeah. uh, kind of uh, seen the demo reel for the work that you've done with uh, with your brother uh, on some of the things you see that intensity and that intensity comes from somewhere. So I'm, I'm yeah. really happy that you, uh, you were sharing this because that's yeah. what it's really about. And yeah. I think it also comes through when you're auditioning. You know, people see yeah. what you have to bring to the table and a lot of depth that's within it that you can use mm. in order to uh, portray the character. And it, it, it comes through. It's really funny you talk about uh, auditions, Alan. I remember when... Um, when Warrior came came across my desk, I was in LA yeah. at the time, and I was due to, to to go back to England. It was a Thursday morning, and and I saw this breakdown from my from my agents. And you know, it's funny because as an actor, you know, and you've been around enough to know that you've got to try and manage your expectations. You've got to try and not yeah. fall in love like too soon, right? Yep. And um, I'm, I mess that up all the time. I'm a Scorpio man. I'm I'm doomed with stuff like that. But um, <laughs> but yeah, this one. I just saw it and I just, I felt this thing. I just knew, I just, I never wanted a, a, a role so much because I, I felt like I had something to give. You know, I felt like I had a lot to give and um, the way it like rolled out was quite, was quite fun. So I flew back to England that weekend. I was in London on Wednesday auditioning in person. I'll tell you, I went in there like my flat cap on. I, I, I had my flat cap, right? Yep. It's like I fucking saw it. I walk in there. Go into this like audition office and whatnot. There's a bunch of actors there, and the first thing that I do is I, I separate myself from everyone. I, I didn't know where I was going to go, where I could go, where I couldn't go, but I found this like quiet room and I locked myself in it. I'm yeah. like lying down on the floor. I'm fucking shadow boxing, man. I'm stood up shadow boxing. I'm, I'm trying to get every kink out that I can. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I heard people like trying to find me and stuff. Dean, Dean, Dean. I'm like, you fucking know, they're going to come and get me soon. They're going to come and get me soon. And then a, this is the weirdest thing. A bird, an actual bird flew, smash into the window oh in my front God. of my face. Just slid down the window. And then I thought to myself, I, I couldn't be screwed here. You know, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. It was just a really, really strange experience, you know, coming to this uh, audition office and trying to get myself into the zone. So I goes in. And I sit down with Kate Road James and I did something really weird. And I've never done this before. I don't think I'd ever do it again. But um, <laughs> but we're getting set up and stuff like that. And and I said, Kate, and she like looks up from a script and I said, just look at me for a second. And she looks at me and I'm just looking at her and I just say, now I'm ready. And then I just, I was ready. And the funny thing is, I don't know whether it was the best audition. It probably wasn't, but... I took the edge off. I found a way to try relax myself and take the edge off. And this is the fun part, you know, but it's flat cap on And Afterwards, I'm doing my slate and she's asking me to do my profiles and she wants me to take my hat off. And I just, I didn't want to take my hat off. You know, I just had my hat on it with the thing. It was I just, plus my hair looked like shit probably anyways. 
And um, when it comes down to taking my hat off and doing my profiles, I'm just like, fuck this guy. I'm like looking this way and I'm just looking that way. I'm looking all pissed off. And then Tropper just said, that's the fucking guy. That's the guy. <laughs> that's yeah. him. Yeah. I'm just weird and wild. But I think other points of my story is in terms of auditioning, you just never know. You never know, like yourself, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You know, you, you never know. You, sometimes you come out of a room and you, just, you think to yourself, well, there's nothing I'd have changed that were just, that were okay, that were good. And then yeah. sometimes you come out kicking yourself, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a wild thing to, to wrap your head around as an actor, I think. The whole process of auditioning and trying to find that kind of comfort zone. It's like a, my interpretation of it is it would be like, tightrope walking with juggling pins that are on fucking fire or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. You gotta try and make it look as organic as possible, but it just doesn't feel it that way. It doesn't. And it's so funny because again, you know, uh, um, the things that I audition for are a little different from you, but you know, I you get ready and you know the script inside out. Right. And you've tried it yeah. different ways and you're ready to uh, kind of uh, take direction and you're good. And then you get mm. in front of your own camera and host where I'm looking at right now. It's behind me uh, or in front of me. And you you're like, OK, let's 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 try to uh, do the same kind of potential experience. And you walk in cold and there you are and you're going. So you kind of play out all of these scenarios. And then the you know, last audition that I went to, I'm driving and I'm fucking late. I am late and being late to <laughs> yeah. an audition is not yeah. a good thing. So yeah. I call my agent. I'm saying, hey, it looks like I'm going to be about 10 minutes late. She gives me crap. Uh, rightly so. Yeah. So you're and in your head already, right? You're in your head right. already. And yeah. the thing that I'm saying is this is where, uh, you know, this T-shirt is coming from. Because I, 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 all of the actors that I talk to, they reach a point where they say, fuck it. And then they start booking. So yeah. in my <clears> mind, I'm late, I'm driving, you know, I'm in Northwest suburbs of Chicago. This is Chicago I have to go to. So I'm thinking, I'm already late. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to relax. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to do the best I can. You know, the, the likelihood is I'm not going to get this audition anyway, uh, or this role anyway. So who cares? I'm just going to go and do it. So I get there. It takes yeah. a while to park. I walk in. Thankfully, they were running a little late. They got me through. I had a great audition. I felt great about it. And I ended up booking it. So you never wow, know. So there you go. You, you never know. You just turned know. that around, didn't you? Yeah. See, that, see, I wasn't expecting that. That was a bit of a twist in the story. I thought they were going to just turn to complete shit. But that were great. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm Thanks. not too sure that, whether or not I'd have pulled that off. I feel like that to get in your head is, is not like anything. Before you do anything, you get in your head that you're your yeah. you're own worst enemy. But um, way to go. Um, isn't it? It's an interesting. I just picked up on what you just said as well when you said that you probably wasn't going to get it. And um, yeah, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because that isn't that the truth, right? It's just like the amount of times that you're actually going out. You know, you're going up against yeah. the odds. And I feel like you know, also dialing into what you just said, you know, about fuck it. You know, it's having like an acceptance of you know when it's your um, when it's your time. Yeah, it's your time when that rolls yours. It's yours, and you know what? There's, it's an absolute truth. If you were to if I were to go back in the timeline of things, yeah. the way things moved in your life, you was there that place. You couldn't do that audition because you were doing that job, and that didn't work out. But then around the corner, that job came in. Yeah. You have to understand that it's it's kind of like out of your control, really. And take comfort in that. Yeah, and you know. the the best thing that you can do is to relax. Make the choices that make sense to you. Don't try to please the, uh, you know, the casting yeah. director or think of what they want you to do. Is to just say, okay, this is me right now. This is what I feel, and this is yeah. the character I'm going to do. And then that's it, right? If they call, they call. If they don't, they don't. That's it. Yeah, I can remember. You know, I've had some really good training in 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 my life. You know, I've been really, uh, you know, uh, fortunate to have some really great coaches. I mean, when my last coach, he'd worked with everyone, Brad Pitt, Jeff Bridges, Heath Ledger, Benicio mm -hmm. Delta, all of them, you know, and they were, they were great. But, you know, when I first started out, you know, I would go into those kind of like summer programs, you know, in, in, yeah. in Los Angeles and stuff like that. And, you know, I felt like some of, sometimes those places would put the fear of God into, into an actor, you know. Sometimes I feel like that, I feel like, honestly, seriously, I'm not bullshit. And that was like, yeah. kind of like my experience. I felt like there was so much pressure, you know, 
um, being put on on, on on the actors and whatnot. Um, I feel like that it just always serves you well just to try to take the pressure off and, and you know, yeah. and just do the work and, and, and realise that, like, you, you know, you've just got to try to show up the best that you can and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for you, again, it's, uh, right, the, some of the things that people may not know about you is that you're an extreme athlete or you've done that. You, you were a pro skater at one time, right? No. Uh, you've done MMA, which I want to get to because uh, uh, that, mm. that's a whole uh, a separate yeah. discussion for Warrior. But you've yeah. done all these things and then you've done Reiki. So um, when you're going into audition, I think that, you know, based on all of those experiences and being in high pressure situations and knowing how to deal with stress, being, you know, a brawler before earlier on and then doing Reiki, which is more of the inner kind of the energy work, hopefully that gives you enough of a tool set to be able to, you know, in your words, take the edge off and get, get yourself centered mm -hmm. before the audition kind of pull things from different experiences and say, oh, okay, I can't get, all right, this, this is going to work. Yeah. Okay, I'm there. So maybe. Yeah. I feel, I feel that like in terms of like energy, we're talking energy now, man. So that's kind of yeah. cool. Um, Reiki did like, I mean, it would, you know, my mother like were really into that and she can like got me into it. And yeah. I don't think I ever carried it out into the work though. It may be subconsciously maybe, but I yeah. was, uh, I don't think I did. Uh, I, maybe I wish I did now, now, now you've said that. But um, I feel that, and this is just me being flatly honest with you, you know, I, I would always, I would always, you know, I'm always kind of nervous, you know, I'm always, there's very little, there's, there's, a, there's a few times that like, oddly I'm not, you know, hmm. and I guess it depends on sometimes the material and how comfortable you are with it. But yeah, yeah and, and, in terms of like having you know control of your energy is, is really good thing it's a really good thing for nerves as well relaxation mm -hmm. is like everything yeah. um but yeah i don't think i ever like used it to my advantage thinking about it um i might try moving forward i don't know you uh you should again you know my recommendation yeah. of somebody at you know my level of understanding and experience but what i <clears throat> i can tell you this morning right so uh uh, right, you're six hours ahead of me, so uh, it's it's kind of midday, early afternoon for you. Uh, for me, it's morning. So I woke up, I got my workout in, I know that I have this interview, I'm jacked, uh, excited about it, and I feel that my yeah. energy is you know, here. And my yeah. energy cannot be here as a host. I need to be more balanced and more centered. So immediately, I'm like, okay, Tai Chi. Uh, tai Chi, Qi Gong, and it's you know, let's ground the energy. And I, I did, you know, a number of these things. I'm like, okay, I'm coming back down to what I am, get into a, a little meditation, just a few minutes, and I feel better. My energy is still a little bit kind of uh, here, but I'm more centered. So like all of these things, regardless of acting that I've ever encountered and I've used, I tend to pull them at whatever time. Uh, Interesting. You know, he comes into my head and I'm like, okay, we'll use this. Let's try that. And That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I can see why that would work for you though. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, back to, uh, back to MMA. Uh, and again, yeah. you know, people may or may not know this, but you know, you started boxing when you were 16. Uh, yeah. You've, uh, you've done brawling. You come from a family of uh, fighters. So there is a lot uh, kind of to unpack yeah. there, but we're, we're not going to get in there. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, you did MMA, you did uh, jujitsu. So uh, when you were, uh, you know, when you were in character as as Leary, because everything is at the you know conscious and subconscious and instinctual level. So your you know Leary is a brawler. Leary is yeah. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna keep going after you until I'm gonna kill you. Uh, yeah. So it's that bare knuckle you know kind of mentality uh, yeah. where you were actually a skilled, uh, you know, uh, a skilled fighter. So mm. I know me at my level, you know, of a black belt uh, uh, skill, which is not very high, but I know when I'm practicing. It's a black belt, what do you mean it's not very high? We're talking about black belt is a black belt, is it not? Black belt is a black belt, but black belt, you know, first uh, Don is very different from black belt, sixth uh, Don. Okay, so I'm right. the black belt first Don. I know, kind okay. of, I know some things, but I know that I don't know, you know, uh yeah. a lot of i've just i've just got like a brown leather belt to go in my jeans that's all i've got so whatever so <laughs> that's that's bruce that's bruce's uh, mentality uh, right the, the belt yeah. is there just to hold up your pants keep your uh, pants yeah. 
but it's instinct. And where I'm going with this is is uh, is long winded, but here's where I'm saying. Now, when I when I practice, and uh, you know, in in the school that uh, kind of I work out uh, doing martial arts, and um, and we're practicing a movement, there is an instinct at whatever level that even when I'm practicing a movement, there is a part of me that says, instead of this movement, I, I feel like doing something else. So whatever it is, maybe it's, you know, the, the karate or the Jeet Kune Do that I was taking 20 years ago that is in muscle memory somewhere. That, muscle you know, memory, yeah, conditioning, yeah. Mm. So something happens there. So when you are fighting and when you are yeah. kind of filming and it has to be very specific, uh, being jujitsu and Assam is doing this. Is there a part of you that instinctually just wants to go for an arm bar, wants to, wants to take him down and go, okay, I can't do that. So Yeah, it's really interesting. It's a great question because that was actually a factor because when you actually know how to fight, you yeah. know, and I guess, you know, and you've done it on the street, you've done it in a gym, you've done it in this and that, it's very different to, to what it is on the screen. Yep. The whole shape of it is different you know the way you're moving you're overselling shots as a fighter you know one thing my dad told me <laughs> this is this is fun i've never even talked about this but my dad were like you know there were two men that like taught me how to throw a really good shot and one was my dad and the other guy was a light heavyweight boxer called mario sardo a sicilian absolute ghost of a guy he was spooky as shit great guy big heart but my dad was saying and, and mario they said the similar thing he said to throw a really great shot really well you've got to like use your hips you've got to like it's like turn on the tap you know like water turn yeah. on the tap twist yep. twist twist and when you can show a really good throw a really good shot sorry when you can throw a really good shot you can throw it from you from your waist and you can take care of anyone if you know how to twist those hips yeah. so on the street or in a in a in a in a in a, a ring, you're kind of keeping it kind of close, right? You you know, it's the shots that you don't see coming that do the yep. most damage. So you kind of like discipline to try keep it short and close and coming from nowhere. Whereas on screen, you're just like winding up these huge yeah. haymaker yeah. shots. You know what I mean? And I feel that that's that's quite. I wasn't. It was harder than what I expected. Actually, it was yeah. harder than what I expected. And going back to Game of Thrones, I had the same trouble. On Game of Thrones because I had this sword and I was used to being a boxer and I'm used to being on my toes and um, uh, you'll know this anyways but like as an actor as a, as a as someone that's trying to like actually like throw down with swords and stuff like that whatever, you've got to have a certain amount of base to you've got to kind of like have the control base so that means you have to be flat foot you can't be on your toes you've got to be yep. you've got to yeah. be flat footed so yep. I was making all the wrong moves and saying Feet down, feet down, feet down, you know, all the time to me. So it is, it's, it's muscle memory. And But the great thing is, though, Brett Chan was brilliant. You know, Brett Chan, we kind of devised a style for Leary. And going back to what he said before, he's a guy that just keeps coming at you, you know, and he's not, he's, you know, he's not really finessical. He's going to keep coming at you like a wall. And, you know, he'll, he's the type of guy that will eat a shot happily if he's going to stick a good right on you. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was quite interesting, but we had to devise a style that like helped me, you know, interpret it. Right. Yeah. You know, so uh, it was interesting. It's, but yeah, to answer your question, did I feel like just taking Koji down? Anyone wrestling? Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's just easy, <laughs> wasn't it? You know, yeah. boom, straight down and just ground and pound. Yeah, that's it. Job's a good one, you know. Well, so. season three. Uh, hey, you know, there is nothing that says that, uh, you know, by season three, Leary didn't uh, start, you know, working with some wrestlers uh, because there is Greco Roman just, wrestling was around at that time. So, right, uh, so there you go. Yeah, you never know. Why not? So why not? Yeah, we'll take advantage of that if that's the case. Oh, you'll be the first to know as well. So guess what, Alan? <laughs> you're never going to guess what. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Brett, if you're listening, you know, why not uh, get uh, take advantage yeah, of something? Yeah, come on. You know. Pull your finger out. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Joe Taslip. Joe Taslip. Joe would be like, yeah, let's go. You know, judo. Oh, we, yeah. We well, you some... see, the, the thing of it is, you know, see, that's it. You know, when I saw Joe, I, I, can, I called him like a possum, you know, he, like, it, it plays himself down, you know, it, it, he's a strong guy. You don't realize how strong that guy is. He's got this kind of functional strength, this grip strength. He's done judo, right? Uh, yeah. Compare, I think he was a champion, right? Was, right. Yeah. His, his yeah. father was, he's come from a family, the background yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. And I can remember him once grabbing hold of me, just gripping me, you know, I'm like, shit, wow. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? He's actually got that kind of 
functional kind of grip, like strength, you know what I mean? And I thought, yeah, yeah it'd be kind of tricky, actually, mixing up with him in a, in a, in a, in a grapple. It'd be quite tricky, I'd say. So, oh, well, I, yeah. So from the actors themselves, because, again, you have actors who are, you know, really good uh, martial artists and you have actors like, uh, you know, Koji, who wasn't necessarily a martial artist. He's done some martial arts earlier on, but he worked his ass off and he became, you know, much, yeah. much uh, better at it. So if there was, uh, you know, you guys, you, you all hung out in, uh, in uh, uh, you know, offset uh, yeah. in, in South Africa, if you, you know, went into a bar and a brawl started, uh, who would you want uh, to have at your back? A good question. I love that question. Um, Koji for sure. I'd want Koji there. Actually, okay. knowing like Taslam's strength, I'm not saying this because they're my boys and they are my boys, but I'm close yeah. to those guys. You know, I mean, you know that you've seen that. You know, I'll probably have them too for sure. Uh, I'm trying yeah. to think. Um, um, well, I mean, like, look at Kieran. Kieran's a big lad. He's a, he's a pretty, you know, he's a big lad. That's the thing. He, he stacks up, you know, he's a sweetheart, obviously. But, you know, I, I, I think maybe in a tussle, he might, he might be pretty good. You just yeah. never know, do you? He's a northern lad as well. Yeah. And don't let him tell you that he's more northern than me. He loves saying that shit. So, Kieran, if you can hear this, you're not more northern than me, bro. You're not. He is, actually, but whatever. Fuck it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, listen, if, if it was uh, during season one, you could have brought uh, Rich. You know, Rich thing uh, definitely can, uh, can tell. I've something. got an answer for you, actually. I've got the perfect answer for you. It's just popped in my head. Season two, Mike Bisping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably say that before a good, smart idea, right? You I know, think so. Story, you know, I can remember actually once I was in London. This is really funny. I was doing an audition in London and I was down there for the day and I was in um, Leicester Square and I was in this pub. It was kind of yeah. quiet. I'm just sat in the corner, this pub. And Mike walks in. I mean, not lying to you, he walks in like John Wayne, he just look, walks in, just like, looks around and stuff like that. And he catches, <laughs> catches eyes with me, and does like a little double take, he looks at me for a second. I'm just looking at him and just walks to the bar, I thought, there you go. I never actually told him that. When I actually met him, you know, in season two, I never yeah. told him that story. That's kind of funny. Mike Bisman would be a good guy to have on your, on your uh, side. Yeah, yeah. I, basically, if Mike was there, I'd just have a seat and uh, <laughs> let him work. Yeah, do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, very cool. Uh, speaking of, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, kind of fighting and other things, you know, we see you with your shirt off in season one, and then we see you with your shirt off in season two. Even, you know, as season two started, when you were still closed, I'm like, wait a second. Dean is much bigger than what he was yeah. uh, in season one. I know yeah. you guys went through kind of a, you know, prep program before season one, and then you yeah. had uh, your training during it. What happened because Koji got ripped? You know, you got huge. Yeah. What happened between season one and season two? Did Brett <laughs> say, hey, guys, you know, this is your plan moving forward or yeah. everybody just was more into it? I just went to like guerrilla camp where, you know, we make monsters. I, don't, I just what it is, is, I'll tell you what it was. I was just so shocked in season one, like the level of fitness, what was, you know, required, I guess. You know, it's no bullshit, you know. I yeah. mean, these guys like Brett and the team and all the stunt guys, the legends, that they're amazing. You know, they keep you safe, but they actually work you to the point where, you know, I was throwing up every other day. And I, I think like when that. it came around to it, yeah, when it came, actually in season one, I was training like a lot, you know, and it was like kind of explosive fitness. There were drills, that kind of thing. It wasn't just lifting weights. And I kind of yeah. like lost a little bit of weight, actually, because and that's yeah. what happens, you know. Sure. You know, if you're not like lifting like heavy and you're like training your circuit training, you're doing this like crazy stuff like nearly every day, like two and a half hours worth of training on the morning, you're gonna do matter who you are, you're gonna like start like you know cutting up and losing weight. And I felt that like I didn't want that to happen in season two, you know. So I kind of like preempted it and I kind of got myself into like at least four months of like training before I even went there. So I didn't okay. make that mistake twice. You know, I said to Brett, I'm coming in this time somewhat yeah. prepared because I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, on my ass throwing up every other training session this time, mate. You know what I mean? So I kind of like give myself that kind of backup and, and that's what happened. And I just, it was down to like diet and it was just lifting heavy and, you know, yeah. you know, eating the right food, you know, uh, repeatedly is, is, it can be a boring thing, but that's what you just got to do. You know, yeah. anyways, you're into fitness and stuff and training, you know, that eating healthy and having your diet right and whatnot, it's like one of the hardest things, isn't it? So It is. 
and it's it's the diet right so i started uh, as i started getting back in shape i started swimming a lot and yeah you know, I that's hard the, that is hard it it's you know talk about throwing up right i started yeah. swimming uh three days a week just a half an hour and the first this has been uh seven weeks since i've done that the first yeah. you know two weeks like i did 12 laps and i was looking at the guys who were going back and forth thinking I don't know how they're doing that because I can barely breathe. Uh, yeah. You know, endurance was zero. Now I, you know, thank God I'm at a point where I'm swimming 25 laps and I can do 30 uh, yeah. easy uh, within that time. But the issue there is that by the time I get home, it's about 7.30 and I'm hungry. I, <laughs> I want to eat. Yeah. And that's eating it. late, that's what kills you uh, in terms of uh, weight. So I'm definitely... Even though I'm burning uh, calories, I'm not burning, you know, enough to eat that late. And I started uh, gaining uh, fat. So I need to kind of well, continue listen, tinkering. Yeah, you're not alone. You're not alone. I'm a, bin, I'm a, a midnight snacker as well. You know, I'm my own worst enemy sometimes. I just, just that guy that walks into the kitchen and has a little walk around, a little lap of the kitchen and opens up the fridge and then goes back another little lap and opens up the fridge again. That's, that's, that's me. So, yeah, <laughs> I get it. Uh, what I started doing that started working, by the way, in case anybody you know uh, cares so how that story ended, is I started throwing in a half an hour uh, at night before I go to sleep of just walking in a treadmill. Uh, and that yeah. gets the metabolism up a little bit. And I started uh, you know, losing weight. So that worked for me. I'll, I'll need to add more things in there. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whatever works. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, because again, you, uh, the characters that you have played, uh, before, uh, you know, uh, before Warrior and other things I've seen you in are intense guys. Uh, it's, it's drama. It's uh, a lot of uh, kind of tragedy that's happening. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't seen, at least in your reel, and I'm looking at your IMDb and other things, I haven't seen you go against uh, type and do comedy. Uh, since you and your brother uh, kind of are writing and uh, producing projects together, uh, is there going to be a project where you do a comedy? Because I think that would be an interesting thing for you to play. You know, I would love that. And it's funny because I've been having these kind of conversations recently, you know. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, I'm pretty, I'm, you know, I'm really stupid. I'm a stupid person. I, I'm very goofy. And I feel like that I can have a lot of fun in that kind of, you know, area of things. It's something that I really want to explore for sure. For absolutely yeah. sure. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's just a case of like, I'd want to, um, I want to get the right type of help as well. It'd have to be the right script, you know, that kind of thing and, and, and whatnot. And I'd have to just feel confident, but it's something I'll promise you that I am going to do. And I've been like thinking about it recently. I've been having conversations about it recently, actually. Yeah. Some of the people that actually know me, they say, you're hilarious, bro. You've just got to do it. You just, you know what I mean? You've got to do it. You've got to like try it, you know, get your feet wet. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I, I think so. And again, it's, uh, you know, uh, you, you and your brother did a great job of continuing to work by creating your own project. Uh, yeah, so, he's doing quite well, he's been, yeah, he's doing quite well, he's, he's doing really well, actually, he's, he's just finished a movie and he's, he's, he's potentially, like, on to his second one now, so it's a great working dynamic we both have, so yeah. we'll see. And by the way, when he, you know, the pictures of him with uh, facial hair similar to you, uh, he, I'm like, I, I did a double take because he looked like you so much, I'm like, wait a yeah. second. Irish twins, yeah, there's like a year apart, yeah, we're uh, just like my doppelganger, just like about this six inch short of me, but yeah. otherwise we could probably pass for each other actually if we're the same height. And he's huge, so he must oh, be man. living uh, heavy. Yeah, he's got like, you know, he's got anvil for hands, man, he's just, he just, he just, he just, he's got, he's always had heavy hands. He was a great bo boxer and mixed martial artist, you know, he like stepped into the cage you know, I've, you know, I saw him put a lot of people away. He was very, very, very good, very fast, very strong. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Dean uh, Jagger uh, connection, right? So your your uncle named you after the actor, uh, yeah. uh, which I found uh, fascinating. And again, I, I was you know on our Facebook group, Daryl uh, Santel, who you talked to uh, before, has uh, said, yeah. "Hey, uh, Dean was uh, with uh, Bruce." Technically, not uh, with Bruce, but he was in the game of death. Uh, and now you have that Bruce Lee connection as well. So the namesakes uh, continue the tradition. It's kind of wild, but isn't it? I know it's a really strange thing. Um, yeah, how it actually turned out to be an actor that after being named after an actor was, I don't know, 
I don't know, it's kind of wacky, right? Well, wacky. And then you met, uh, you know, Michael Douglas at 14. Uh, and then you yeah. started kind of thinking about acting. I did, so yeah. It was, yeah, I met, like, we were, we were in uh, Spain. I think it was Spain and whatnot. And, you know, we were in this, like, little boat. And it was, like, anchoring this, like, huge vessel of his and whatnot. And they were getting off. And that we ended up, like, meeting him and whatnot. That were quite wild because... I was watching all kinds of movies at a very young age, by the way. Yeah. Just so you know, I mean, my parents, they just let me watch anything. So I was watching like Michael Douglas stuff when I was like super young and whatnot. I know he did some like, mm-hmm. like, like for instance, movies like, um, what's that movie with Sharon Stone? Basic uh, Instinct. Yeah. I shouldn't have been watching that movie that age, but I did. <laughs> I'm sorry, what age, what age was that? I don't know. I'm not going to say because mum will kill me. If, you know, I don't okay. know. <laughs> Yeah, as Larry scared of his mom, you know. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my son, who's uh, 11 and a half, uh, continues begging me because he wants to watch Deadpool. I'm like, mm, no, yeah. not yet, not yet. Yeah, uh, so do you like, kind of like, you, you go by the rules and you're very, like, careful about what, you know? N- no, but there are certain things that I'm just like, no, Deadpool, not yet. Uh, I'm... I'm going to make sure that you watch Deadpool, but a little bit later. Just to yeah, give absolutely. It a, <laughs> a absolutely. absolutely. It, was, it was a thing for, for us growing up, though, because we didn't always get to see his dad. You know, his dad were working away in London a lot. He was a builder, so we'd only yeah. see his dad on the weekends. So it was one thing that we used to do as, like, a family. Like, um, we used to get videos and just watch movies all weekend. That was a thing. Cool. No, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, yeah. And then, again, kind of, so what, what drives you? Uh, because you're you're established uh, now as an actor, you've done tremendous work. So hopefully things are starting to open up. I know pandemic yeah. uh, hit, so that uh, yeah. uh, went a little bit uh, off target. But what drives you as an actor, and what drives you as a person right now? I think that it's a cre- the creative space in itself is a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? I've always right, and I've I've always been I've always been that kid that's you know I didn't do that great at school I, I you know I loved drama I loved English I loved history fancied my history teacher she was called Miss Dawson she was American uh, I had a little bit of a soft spot for her so I've you know I've, I've always been this kind of like I've always been a dreamer man you know what I mean I've always liked dreaming you know I'm the type of guy that believes in all that kind of cool stuff I believe in people I believe in the world I believe in wonder and magic and stuff I believe in creating things I've always had that kind of you know, that young thing going on in my heart. And I feel that, you know, as an actor as well, is it's it's a, it's, it, it's some outlet, man, to have in your life. It's su- such an outlet to have. And it's such a, a great thing to be able to call your job, you know. And anyone that's trying to, like, you know, get after it, I take my heart off to it. It's, it's an amazing thing. It, 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 it really is. But um, just from a sense of being, just from a creative, like, standpoint, I don't know, I just... It fills me up, you know. I mean, I'm a, you know, I write now as well, you know, with my brother. Yeah. I'm like building worlds and stuff like that. So, it, you know, and I want to have a, you know, I want to, if I can, try to change people's lives, especially my family's, if I can, you know, that motivates me. You know, I, I've grown up, you know, like I said before, in, in a small town and in those kind of, you know, um, those type of places and stuff, there's that proverbial ceiling set already there's that bar set where you there's like limit beliefs and i've always been that type of person that wants to you know smash that out of the way and try to get after what i really want i've never been deterred from having that kind of big goal dream and it is that that you know i don't want to be that cautionary tale like in 30 years and say yeah i never tried that as long as you try it's okay you know sometimes we fail right but as long as we try that's what we could do we've just got to try and I've just always had the aspiration of just trying and trying to do the best that I can. And if I do that and I do something that sings to me, which acting does, and that allows me to change other people's lives, I think that's important, you know. I feel like I've been inspired as well, right? There's many, like, great actors out there and performances, and I've been inspired, and I feel like, that you know, it's, it's worth sticking around for yeah. to be inspired, you know, whatever it is in life. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and that's, that's it. And you, you mentioned it, right? It's that uh, for me, it's the fear of not doing what it is that I think I'm meant to do. Uh, yes. Yeah. And that's, that's what drives me. So yeah. I, yeah. I never want to, at the end of my life, I never want to look at my life, say, fuck, I should have done that. 
I should have done this. Absolutely. I want to do Absolutely. It. I'll take my hat off to you, man. Absolutely. I, I get behind that. Anyone that has that kind of outlook on it, I'll stand behind you. Thank you. you know. And I want to finish off uh, because, again, you, you don't talk about this, but I want to talk about it. Uh, you know, people think of, uh, of you uh, because of Warrior. They think of, uh, you know, Dylan. And thankfully, Dylan became uh, more likable and understandable in season two. But yeah. you're, you're a hero. You saved, uh, you saved uh, some lives and you saved a man and you saved uh, his uh, granddaughter from drowning. What happened there? I want people to know about that side of you as well. Yeah, I, well, I was, um, it was in a, it was a, 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 a swimming, um, like a, a, a swim pool. It's called Lightwaves. And I had a wave machine on and I was with my mom and my, my brother at the time, my two brothers at the time. And um, I was on my own. I was, I was very young, actually. And I just saw this old man with um, his young granddaughter I believe she was clinging onto his neck and she was like crying and the guy was just dipping underneath the water and I could tell by the look in his face that it was going into like a shock you know yeah. it wasn't like trying to catch his breath he was just sinking under the water with his mouth open and surfacing again and this girl was going underneath the water with him so I just like ran and dived in and um I pulled them both out and um man I think a lot of people got fired that day because <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you yeah. got this young sprog that goes in and dives in and pulls this playing up this older gentleman out and his his granddaughter and like I don't know I think a few people lost their jobs, but yeah that was that was um yeah that was a that was an interesting um that was an interesting yeah. experience. Well, you're a great yeah. guy, and uh, okay. it's uh, in in talking to you kind of uh, over these number of months trying to uh, trying to set this up, getting to know you yeah. a little bit. You know, that's the side that I saw. You know, my, the initial thing was, you know, intimidation by Leary. And then I saw just a really good guy on the other end of it, of who is the person. And the more I read about you and the more I talked to people, the more I realized that, you know, I really want people to know this D because these D appreciate them so much more to offer. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you came on. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Alan. Cheers, man. No, thanks. And, uh, Thanks to everybody for tuning in, uh, our Facebook group. Love you guys. Uh, and uh, hey, I'm, I'm so looking forward to season three. As, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dean, uh, best of luck. Uh, you're, you're very welcome on the show anytime you like. Thank you so much. That means a lot, man. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. All right. Take care, everybody. Cheers, buddy.